Hey friends, welcome to another YouTube video from SMNP Reviews. I'm Ashton, one of the facilitators with the SMNP team. I'm also an NP faculty member, and today we're going to talk all about some of the most common studying mistakes that I see students make. And we'll also discuss some tips and tricks to correct those mistakes and optimize your study plan. So let's get started. So one of the most common mistakes that I see is what I call panic studying. Panic studying is that overwhelming feeling of anxiety that students often experience when they see the amount of material they need to cover for their exam. Panic studiers tend to study with no sense of direction whatsoever. They'll start quote unquote studying without really knowing what their priorities are, what they need to focus on in that study session, or which study strategies they're going to use to retain that information. This can also lead to overwhelming anxiety and confusion with all of the material as well. And this actually might be the biggest mistake of all friends because it affects all of the other ones that we're going to talk about in this video. If students don't know what material is most important to learn or how to study it effectively so that they can retain it, then chances are that those students will spend a lot of time spinning their wheels or getting distracted and end up going into their exam far less prepared than they could have been. So how can you prevent panic studying? Well, you can start by setting tangible goals and reminding yourself of your accomplishments. Oftentimes students become so overwhelmed with NP school or the pressure of passing boards. So don't get lost in the big picture, friends. Instead, focus on the smaller steps and break those bigger goals down into smaller pieces. Take it day by day. Focus on passing one test or conquering one study session, and I promise you'll feel so much better. Panic studying can also be the result of the second studying mistake that we're going to talk about, procrastinating. How many of you are guilty of procrastinating studying for an exam? I think we all have been at one time or another, and I know many of you may be working full time and you're juggling lives and families and other responsibilities outside of school. And sometimes studying, whether it's for your board exam or for NP school, simply has to take a backseat for a bit. And that is totally okay. However, procrastination, more than on an occasional basis, can be detrimental to your studying friends. The more you procrastinate, the more it leads to panic studying and building that anxiety and material confusion. It can also lead to something called marathon studying, AKA cramming. And we know that cramming for an exam is anything but studying. When students cram, they are simply memorizing the information and then brain dumping it onto their exam, which is problematic in a field like nursing where each concept builds onto the next one. So for example, if we memorize all of our hypertension guidelines and then brain dump all of that information after the test, what is going to happen when we're asked to recall that information when learning about related comorbidities such as diabetes and chronic kidney disease? We're going to have to relearn all of that material plus some, right? Which can definitely be counterproductive. So now, on top of having to relearn all of the hypertension guidelines, we also have to learn all of the guidelines associated with our patients who may have diabetes and chronic kidney disease. So what can we do to combat panic and marathon studying and set you up for success? First, we need a plan. While some students may feel that cramming or a marathon study session is the best way to prepare for an exam, studies have actually shown that taking breaks not only helps improve concentration, but also improves retention. Allowing yourself some mental downtime during study sessions may also help you learn more effectively. You do not need to be studying for six to eight hours at a time, friends. There is no way humanly possible to retain that amount of information in one sitting. Your mind is going to wander and your attention span is going to falter. Instead, I recommend setting up a study calendar. Work backwards and figure out when you need to start studying each section of the material and what days you'll devote to which topics. Break up your study sessions and keep it down to one to two hours. Your brain will definitely thank you. Remember quality of studying versus quantity. 
Another common studying mistake that many students are guilty of is distracted studying. You want your study time to be focused and intentional. So if you're scrolling through social media or watching Netflix as you haphazardly skim through your notes, you are not retaining that information. We want to study smarter, not harder, friends. So when you're committing those one to two hours of studying each day, focus on the task at hand and cut out those distractions. Try turning off your phone, putting it on Do Not Disturb, leaving it in another room, or even try listening to some classical music softly in the background to help you cut out those distractions. So we've talked a lot about how long to study, but what about how to study? And that is probably the most frequent question I get from students. Dr. Glover, how should I study for your exams? Well, that is going to look a little different for every student. A common mistake that students make is not knowing what type of learner they are. Ask yourself, how do I learn best? And then cater your studying habits to that technique. So for example, if you're an auditory learner, you may learn best from listening to recorded lectures or podcasts, whereas for someone like me who is more of a visual or kinesthetic learner, I retain information better by using hands-on tools such as flashcards or rewriting my notes. And the last studying mistake I want to mention before we finish up this video is using passive study strategies. The most common study method most students use is reading over their notes and textbook. Unfortunately, this approach is not very effective, in large part because it is extremely passive. I've found that students who use this approach will readily admit that they can read over a page of notes and not remember a single word of what they have just read. And if you don't remember it right after you've read it, how can you possibly hope to answer questions about it on an exam? Another passive learning strategy we touched on earlier is memorization. I frequently see students who study by trying to memorize their textbook cover to cover rather than truly understanding the information. Memorizing can work well in some instances, such as with cranial nerves or assessment signs, but it often backfires on NP students if they've memorized the information but don't really understand what it means or how to apply it. So as soon as that material is presented in a slightly different format, or if they're asked to apply it to a patient scenario, they have absolutely no idea how to proceed. So what do you think we should do instead? So instead, I encourage students to use more active learning strategies that require you to engage with the material. It's going to enable you to obtain that knowledge more effectively and efficiently. So how can you incorporate active learning strategies into your study routine? First, rather than memorizing the information, I encourage you to use study strategies that promote understanding, such as explaining those ideas out loud, teaching them to someone else, or applying that knowledge in the clinical setting. Research has also shown that practice questions or active recall is the most effective way to prepare for exams. Numerous studies have shown that students who test themselves on the material learn and retain the information much better than students who don't utilize practice questions. At SMMP Reviews, we absolutely love practice questions. Our team strongly recommends students test themselves frequently. We like to recommend about 20 to 30 practice questions a day, again, remembering the quality versus the quantity, and make sure you're implementing those test-taking strategies and your anxiety plan. Then go back and understand those rationales. Read them and digest the why behind it. This is going to enhance your memory and also confirm that you actually learn the material. And we actually recommend at least a thousand practice questions prior to taking your certification exam. And I know that sounds like a ton of practice questions, friends, but you definitely don't have to complete them all in one sitting. If you have a few minutes on your lunch break, a lull between patients and clinical, or even if you're sitting in the car line waiting to pick up your kids, do a couple of practice questions and you'll be surprised by how quickly you'll reach that 1000 mark. And I promise that these will be an absolute game changer in your study plan. And that's it for this video. So be sure to check out our website for more information on our live reviews and self-paced courses, both of which can assist you in setting up your own study calendar. 
Also, check out our question bank that contains over a thousand practice questions. And don't forget to join our Facebook community where you can always ask any and all questions. We're rooting for you, friends. Happy studying.